In our previous tutorial, we used the Spring's bean factory object in order to instantiate an object of our own. We did not use the new, we used a Spring API using the bean factory object. So in this tutorial, first of all, um, I'd like to introduce you to another object called application context. This application context is um, bean factory's big brother. It does everything that the bean factory does, but it also has some additional functionality. It has features like event notification, AOP and other functionalities. We will have a look at those functionalities later on. But the point here is that uh, the application context does all the things that the bean factory does and more. Also, since there is not a huge difference in the cost and as far as performance is concerned, uh, you would want to go with the application context and uh, you would want to use bean factory only when the resources are very crucial. So now in this case, let me um, change this line of code to use the application context but then I only need to change this part where I'm actually reading the configuration from spring apart from this all the other syntax remains the same uh, I can also do a get bean for the application context just like I'm doing a get bean for the bean factory so the way I uh, instantiate an application context is call this context equals now again just like uh, the bean factory the application context is also an interface and you have different implementations depending on your configuration so there is this uh, object called class path xml application context which is similar to what we are doing here um, we are picking up an xml from the actual class path of our application so here what i'll do is i'll say new class path XML application context. Now the advantage of using the class path XML application context is uh, you don't have to you know send a new file system resource as a parameter. You can just specify a string with the XML file name and it'll pick that up. So I'll just have to pass a string with spring.xml. Now of course I'll have to import these two classes and now instead of factory I will use the context save and another change we need to make is uh, here my spring.xml is in the root of the application I need to move it to a class path so let me move this to the src folder here so now that it's in the class path now let me run this and make sure that it works fine yeah it's working fine I'm still able to instantiate the triangle okay now we'll go back to where we ended our previous tutorial we said that uh, uh, the advantage of having a triangle class instantiated by spring here it doesn't really make much sense in this case because a triangle is a very simple object so in this uh, tutorial what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to have a member variable for triangle I'll show you how you can instantiate an object with the member variable preset. So say for example, I have uh, a member variable here called type and uh, let me generate the getters and setters for this. Okay, so now what I can do with uh, the spring container is when I'm instantiating an object and I'm getting this uh, triangle object I can actually preset the value of this type I can have whatever string I need already instantiated inside this object that I'm getting and the way I do that is again by using the spring.xml so here in our spring.xml okay, I need to close this since we have moved this guy here Okay, in a spring.xml, I told you this is a blueprint for our uh, object that we're going to create. And this, this is a very simple blueprint, I've just given the class name. But I need to extend this blueprint and I need to prefill a value for this new member variable that I've added here. So what I'm going to do is, here, I will close the stack 
okay so inside this tag I can write a property tag property name equals so the name of the property that I want to preset which is type and the value that I want it to be pre-filled as so um, here I'll be mentioning the type of the triangle. Uh, just a geometry refresher, uh, there are three types of triangles. One is uh, equilateral, one is isosceles, and one is scalene. So I will say this is a equilateral triangle. Now close this property. So what I'm doing here is again, I'm defining what's going to be the blueprint of my bean and I am also having a preset value for this type member variable. So what's going to happen is when I ask Spring to get me this triangle object here, what Spring is going to do is it's going to look at this blueprint and says, okay, this guy wants a triangle of this class. It's going to instantiate an object of this class and then it sees this property tag. So it's going to fill the value which is set over here, it's going to assign it to this property and then it's going to return me an object that has this value set for this, proper, for this property. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the draw method here and uh, I'm going to print out the type. So I'll say get type. Okay, and I'm going to save this. So if I run this now, there you can see equilateral triangle is drawn. So this value is already set inside the triangle object. So I don't have to set it. So no matter how many properties I have, I don't have to initialize the object every time I need an object. Once I configure it in my spring.xml, it's going to be there and ready. So I'm, it's actually like a preset for an object. All the properties are filled in and I can get the completely prepared object just by running one call to the get bean.